Welcome everyone. Adam the Woo here as the recording of this. It is Thursday, March 9th, 2023. Currently in Southern California, out of the desertest, desertest, desert-esque region. I'll be going to Las Vegas. Currently heading that direction here in my rental car. Beautiful snow-peaked mountains off in the distance. I'm inviting you to join me on my commute from the greater LA area. I was technically in Orange County. Orange County, I stayed in Buena Park the last series of days. Did some LA stuff, did some Orange County stuff. And now, I'm off to Vegas. What happens in Vegas doesn't always stay in Vegas. Join me, shall you? Take a look at the snow up there on those mountains. It's very gusty and very windy. Feels great out here. Love it. Got to hit some roadside stops along the way. Right off of Interstate 15, there's these rock formations. And when you're driving down the freeway, they look a lot like Vasquez rocks from a certain angle. But when you get up closer to them, they don't really look as jagged as Vasquez Rocks, which is a little north of LA. Totally different area. Still pretty, pretty interesting rock formations though. Now this is a route I have taken many, many times from LA to Vegas, and then just cross country road trips and whatnot. I will not be going back to California. In fact, after my tenure in Vegas, I will be flying back to Florida out of Vegas, dropping off this rental car after a series of days. Stop off here at this very unique Barstow station. I'm in Barstow now. I'm gonna get a coffee and also show how this Mickey D's has trains out front. It's kind of iconic. I filed this one under travel day, which is basically getting from point A to point B, showing things along the way, which sometimes works out pretty good. Check out the Santa Fe Railroad cars here. Now on the other side, there's like an eatery inside, but on this side, oh, this door is open right here. Must be like a little maintenance bay or something. But this door is open, leading to like a little closet. And the train cars even wrap around here to this end too. Look at the size of this hand up here. Look at that handful of coins. is like half the size of the person giving the coins or taking the coins. There's also a water tower over here as well, kind of a beacon from the interstate. Set up just like an old old uh, station of some sort. I mean, it's called the Barstow Station, but it definitely has that old timey feel here. And you can go right inside and just gotta showcase what's inside here. I'm gonna go inside, get myself a coffee, and just kinda see, what, see what's happening inside the Barstow Station. It's been a while since I've been inside. I've passed by this many times fueled up in the general vicinity before. But it's been a while since I stopped inside. I'm just check it out. Stretch the legs. Decided not to grab a coffee inside there. For whatever reason, the line was kind of long. To Mickey D's, so I'll stop somewhere else. Gotta go ahead and head to Vegas. I-15 north from here. Las Vegas, Nevada. Something you definitely don't normally see. Golden arches right here on the side of an old train car, right? It's different. Just like embedded right there on the side. Self pumping gas nozzle fueling up here. Price per gallon $4.89 for regular unleaded. Here at this Arco AM PM. Kind of wondering what this random machine is here on the side near the gas pumps. States that 24 hour surveillance, but it wouldn't be for the gas pumps because the gas pumps are right there. That's interesting. I don't know what the heck that is. It's not an ATM.
Huh. This little building has seen better days. Looks like it caught fire and is decomposing, falling in. There's an old television set. One place I always like to stop at, Peggy Sue's 50 Diner, not to eat, but to look at some of the interesting things. Oh, also, take a look, alien fresh jerky, Texas style in Vegas. Or oh, no, actually, Baker's in California, before you get to the state line. I'll be stopping there too, down the road. Yeah, just checked my directions and 50 miles to Baker, California. Still a ways, they already got the signs out here. And speaking of signs, signs everywhere is signs. It says day and night camera surveillance right up here on this thing. It's like almost like a hand, not handwritten, but it's like almost like a Sharpie style. But in here, there are dinosaurs. There is a pirate dangling from a tree. There is an assortment of buildings, which does not look like you can go in any of the buildings at this moment. You know, just like prehistoric creatures all around in here. And the diner itself is shaped to look like a jukebox from back in the day as well, which is kind of neat. This little courtyard area back here. And it's definitely warmed up a lot since I've gotten out of LA. It, maybe it's just uh, because it's warmer today all over this general area, but out here, it get farther in the desert, it has warmed up quite a bit. It's, it's definitely a little warmer than it has been in the last series of days. The area out back to, or the area out back, is referred to Peggy Sue's Diner Soar, Dinosaur Park, Diner, and a soar. I think a bird just flew by at the camera there. So you got the outside area, which has the prehistoric creatures, but then inside, there is an assortment of nostalgia as well inside the building known as Peggy's. I'm not ready for any food quite yet. I think I might stop in Baker and get some, but I always like to stop inside Peggy Sue and just showcase some of the stuff that's in here. It's a must stop off. We're going from LA to Vegas, in my opinion, or from Orange County to Vegas, whichever. Or Southern California to Vegas. It's just like a cool little, cool little stop off. All the little weird, quirky roadside attractions. Always worth a stop off inside Peggy Sue's. All right, heading back to my car and gotta continue on. All right, now I'm gonna grab a coffee from Eddie's World here in Yermo, California. Eddie's World. There's a lot of these kind of stops on the way to Vegas. This place has all kind of stuff. Ice cream, souvenirs, things like that. Gas, already fueled up though. So the mascot must be right there in the middle. Is that an egg? Not sure what that is. An egg or some kind of circular? I'm not sure what that is. Right there it says, right above Eddie's World and Welcome. Also, this is interesting. There's like this little, I don't know what this is, like a partition in front of here. I'm trying to figure out what that mascot is. Either way. Oh, it's not Eddie's world, it's Eddie world. Eddie world. That must be Eddie. As long as they have coffee, that's all. That's really, that's, that's the main focus right now. A little caffeine for the drive. Oh, the backseat of that vehicle, it's Grogu. I gotta say, I wasn't like super impressed with the inside of that place. I mean, it was, it was all right, but I got some Pete's coffee, however, which I took a, took a sip of this. Pretty dang tasty. But the inside, I don't know, the inside of that, I don't know if it's worth pulling over. I mean, obviously the outside of it with that huge ice cream thing is awesome. But other than that, pretty standard. Just a big open area with a lot of gifts and whatnot. Right off the side of the freeway through this area are the Ten Commandments. That says, you shall not covet. And there's a cross right up here too. And a star. Pulled off this little side road parallel to the freeway. Really hardly any cars on this one. Off in the distance is a water park that closed decades ago, if I had to guess. Lots of spray paint all over 
everything. Slides have been removed, but I think some of the pools might still be in there. This is like a quintessential on the way to Vegas from SoCal sightline whenever you kind of look over here. This was the old uh, pull-in parking area. Or actually, this was the exit. You can see the exit signs there underneath some of the spray paint. And this was the full parking lot. Just walk up here real quick before getting back on the road. Last time I drove by here, I don't know, a year or so ago, there was a really bad dust storm. I couldn't even get out of my car. Could barely even see out the window. So I had to look from a distance. But all the structures are still intact, other than the slides that they've taken down. Just a lot of spray paint. Got a piece of the old signage there protruding out. That's pretty cool. It's a Lisa Simpson painting on the side. See the old structures out there that have the water slides on them. And take a look, it still says Water Park, or at least says Water Par right here at the main entrance. That's pretty wild. Just can use your imagination. A lot of people out here on the slides in their swimming trunks. That was probably used for like skateboarders, BMX, and those with spray paint. It's like a desolate wasteland out here in the desert. Watermark sign still right there. Here's where the turnstiles were and a fountain. Probably won't be too long before everything's burned down. You can see this building's been recently burned. That one over there as well. This one still stands and all these other ones still stands. Snack bars, gift shops, things like that. And up at the top of the hill was where the slides were. But as I stated, the slides have been removed. Just the stanchions and the structures is all that's left. This must have been the lazy river. Yeah, you walked in right there and then the, the lazy river went all around the park with another pool right here as well. And the stairs leading up to the top of the slides up there. And there's where the slides dumped out right there. Go down the side of this incline and then dump into the water. Oh, and there's Bob down there, there's Bob. Right there, there's Bob. That's clever. All right, gonna head back to my car, continue driving. Still got a ways to go. Just seeing the sheer amount of artwork on the walls here, on the floor, down below, over my shoulder here. I can definitely tell people have been coming out here for many, many years, pulling off the side of the road and walking in here. It's just so wild. It's just off, right off the side of the road. I mean, I guess they have no reason to tear it down until they build something else new here, and they probably never will tear anything else new or build anything else new here. Not really sure what this is used for now. It's all fenced off. It says market on the side. It's all fenced off, chain link and barbed wire. This is like, I don't know, 
10, 15 miles from where I just was. And now approaching the most bizarre named road ever. Zizix. Or is it Zizix? I think it's Zizix. But it could be Zizix. Either way, it's a bizarre name for a road. Zizix Road. Zizix Road. Zizix Road. And then the next exit up from there, which is like another five miles or so, is into Baker. Baker Boulevard, which takes you directly into Baker. And even though there's a lot of desolate stuff here in this community, there is a lot of stuff open, but the Royal Hawaiian Motel is not one of them. And as you can see, I'm not the only person stopping to take photos. This classic signage here, this old retro sign, neon. For me, there's something very comforting about Baker, simply because I stop here every single time I've gone through this route, this thoroughfare. And I always stop at the Mad Greek. I'd say nine times out of 10, I stop at the Mad Greek and get a shake. One of the best shakes I've ever had. So I'm gonna do that while I'm here. This kind of shows the trajectory of the distance I've gone. You got Hollywood over here. You zoom in, you can even see Universal and Pantages and all that. And then you got Disneyland down there. They have not converted the Hollywood Tower to Guardians yet here on the mural. And I hope they don't. Then you got the country store that this mural's on the side of. And you got the distancing arrows there, the distance signs. And then you got over here, Las Vegas, which is where I am heading. I'm heading to Vegas, and there's some of the iconic pieces, landmarks from Vegas. So this just kind of shows the progression of distance from this journey that I have taken today. The Bun Boy Motel is also closed. Marketplace 15 has seen better days. And one thing Baker's also known for didn't work for a long time. There were many years you passed through here and the world's largest, what would it be a thermometer? I guess it'd be a thermometer. World's largest gauge of temperature was not working, but now it is working because they got it working a couple years ago. Now I checked the weather app on my phone and it says it was 68, 69 degrees here in Baker. Now I checked the weather app on my phone and according to that it was 68, 69 degrees but according to the largest self-proclaimed thermometer, the self-proclaimed largest thermometer or weather stick, it is 67 degrees, which is pretty pleasant for this, for this time because sometimes it gets to be like 110, 120. So you can see it has every 10, it has 30, 40, 50. And if it's in the 60s, it goes to that mark. And then it goes to 70s, 80s, 90s, 100. This thing could get to like 140 degrees. That would be toasty. If I tallied up how many shakes I've purchased from this place over the course of my lifetime, it would probably be over two dozen. It also used to be a Mad Greek in Orange County, kind of near Knott's, I think it's on Beach, or maybe somewhere near Beach Boulevard, but it's in Orange County. But it was converted to a Noggles. Noggles is back, the, the you know Mexican taco place. And there's no more Mad Greek, so this might be the only Mad Greek that I know of. There might be more, but this place is still standing here in Baker. and. Has some delicious shakes. I highly recommend the shakes from here. Oh, look at this beautiful thing. This was like $10. I think I ordered a large. I probably should have got a medium. I didn't realize. I think maybe in the past I ordered like a smaller or a medium, but or that, or they've just upsized the, the deliciousness of this. I went with this just straight up vanilla. Oh, this thing is good. I think it was like $10 and change, give or take. First time I ever had this, I was in a band and we traveled through here. I think we were going to play a show in Vegas, actually. And they were like, oh, we can stop at the Mad Greek and get a shake. And I was like, all right, yeah, I'm on board for that idea. And then once I had it, I was like, oh my goodness. And I was kind of hooked ever since. And I don't stop every time I go through here, but like I said, probably nine times out of 10, 
And I'm always kind of trying to spread the word about the shakes I have here. Pretty dang good. Their food's pretty good too, but I'm gonna go over to Alien Fresh Jerky, which is just down the Baker Boulevard, and get some jerky. Oh, that's thick. Oh my god. Yeah. That is good. A little umbrella on there too, a little parasol. It's so thick I gotta let it melt a little bit. Just straight up vanilla. Nothing too complicated. Here at the Mad Greek. They have really good food too. Their food here is awesome. But I'm, you know, I'm gonna get some jerky for the rest of the trip. Not too, not too much farther to Vegas. I'm kind of curious if they have finally opened the hotel down there. They were building a hotel at Alien Fresh Jerky. I'm gonna find out. It's only about a quarter of a mile or a few hundred yards that way, past the thermometer. Now this is the, the regular Alien Jerky place. And this is the extension around the back that they have had under construction for years. Years now they're gonna have some accommodations and I am just waiting for this thing to open. I come stay here, but it's still under construction back in there. I can't even drive back in there and take a look at it or anything. Slowly but surely, one day, one day it'll be open. Here's the time travel station right here. It has alien pretzels according to the signage. Here's an alien giving the peace sign. And of course, this alien type vehicle out front that is open. Oh yeah, quintessential road trip to Vegas stop off. Look at this. You can even see the alien down inside the little ship there. Take a look. Now, I can remember when this was just a small little place before they completely redid the front of this. It looked like some sort of a, gosh, I don't know what this is. A vessel of some sort, like a tank. All right, I'll stop inside and get some jerky. Let's see what other kind of stuff they have inside here. It's probably, you know, I don't really have a certain particular flavor of jerky that I like, but I always like to get a couple bags every time I pass through here. It's like a rite of pass. It's like a win in Rome moment. You have to get some alien fresh jerky. Win in Baker. That and Mad Greek. Those are the two staples of Baker, California. Uh, since the last time I was in here, I guess a year or so ago, they have extended and changed the interior just a little bit too. A lot of it looks the same. But a lot of it has changed. They've added a few more things, kind of opened it up just a little bit and added a few more differences that I had. I mean, some stuff's still the same, but it did. There was, there was some noticeable changes. Different areas and little corridors through here and merchandise and things like that. All in all, always good to stop off at Alien Fresh Jerky in Baker, California. They do exist. At least jerky does. At least jerky exists. I haven't decided about aliens yet, but maybe they, they might exist. And right across the street, this place, Chinese food place, fast food place closed. It's like a beacon, that alien up there. I ended up getting pepper beef jerky and the original beef jerky. Look at this one. This is on like a, this is like on a, a horse, this one. Like, look at that. Can't go wrong with some alien fresh jerky. I don't know how fresh it is. I don't know what the, if the aliens thought process on freshness is the same as humans, but it might be. Good stuff. Not even a countdown, no announcement, no clue when around the back will open, when the hotel will finally rear its head. But when it does, I'd like to stay there. It's back over there, back behind it. It'd be so cool to stay there one day. If it ever opens. Uh, it's, it's taken a while.
approaching Prim. Pretty much desert, 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 desert. And then right at the state line, the Nevada state line, civilization. Casinos. Slots of fun. Cards aplenty. Gambling goodness, if that's your thing. It's like a little oasis in the desert. It's really weird. It just goes from nothing to this. The last time I passed through here, Buffalo Bills was still closed. In fact, it was closed for a few years. But it has reopened, but it does not look as if the coaster has opened. In fact, I don't know if they'll ever reopen this coaster. I went on it back in 2015. It is pretty scary. There's also a log ride inside here. And that log ride, I believe, is not reopened either. But the casino is open. Looks like this entire casino here, I think this is Gene, Nevada, is closed down. Pulling off the freeway onto the exit. See a lot of stuff's boarded up and shuttered. And they have these cones, there were cones out in front. They don't want anybody driving over to that area. It's called Terribles. It's closed. There are two of these prospectors the other one I passed on the way in, this is the second one. Doing a little mining for gold. Best of luck, buddy. Best of luck. Someone on a dirt bike out there or a four-wheeler. That's a dirt bike. And I got a train going by. Got off of the main thoroughfare, got off the freeway, the interstate. On this little side road. Going over to Seven Magic Mountains. I remember when they put seven magic mountains in. Gosh, that's been probably three, four, five, six years ago now. Lost track. Let's see how the seven magic mountains are doing. It's like an art installation of sorts. There are quite a few people out here. This is giving me some Cadillac Ranch vibes. A Cadillac Ranch where the cars are sticking out of the ground. Every time you go by there, there's usually quite a congregation of people like this out there. Years ago, when they first put this up, hardly anybody would be here. But over the, over time, the legend of Seven Magic Mountains has grown considerably, and people know about it. And they pull over here and look at it off the interstate. One, two, three, four, five. So say, one, two, three. Oh, there's one beside it. Four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Magic Mountains, this guy's gotta jump. So if you just pan around this way, take a look. Okay, so sometimes they're obscured. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right there. Sometimes you just walk a few feet and one's obscured. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven Magic Mountains. And then over here are some smaller little rock formations that people have put up. Here's what. I guess the big thing is, is just everyone's doing the jump photos. Everyone's doing the jump photos, very interesting. What I'm curious about is what the heck is going on back here? What is the private event that is happening out here in the desert? It says, area closed for private event. The aliens. The aliens. They're having a private event. So you can't go past this. 
the area is closed for a private event. Oh, look at this, look at this. March 10th and 11th. That's tomorrow. Today's the night as a recording of this. Weird. Temporary land closure tomorrow night. Interesting. Looks pretty cool with the sun setting down at kind of like golden hour. And there is a parking area off the distance over here. Let's go back to my rental car and get into Vegas. I'm almost there. Another option instead of taking a rental car or personal vehicle to Vegas, you can always fly in. If you so choose. I did not choose that option, however. And when you arrive in Vegas, you should probably go, you know, it's kind of a win in Rome moment to get a photo with the sign, but I don't really need a photo. I just need a document that I've arrived. So I'm gonna walk over here to the side. But if you want a really good photo, it's better to wait in the line, but a lot of people get over here to the side and get their photo from the side. I'm just gonna kind of stand right here. Zoom in. I am in Las Vegas for the next series of days. At least the greater Las Vegas area. Maybe some on the outskirts, but a lot in Vegas proper too. That's going to do it for today. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is...